Good morning. Um, yeah, so <clears throat> I'm going to finish the last of this today. And uh, this article goes pretty in depth. Um, he spoke of uh, gifts of healing yesterday in here. Um, <clears throat> healing, those gifts, all of the, those things are redundant. They're set aside today. Uh, there's no miraculous things happening. So the Pentecostal institution, which I call it, is uh, it's a bunch of fanfare and uh, outward uh, show. Um, Martin just done a show on uh, casting out demons. Well, <laughs> these Pentecostal institutions, they do a good job, <laughs> don't they? I don't think so. Um, my brother, Walter, he was right involved in all that <clears throat> Pentecostal stuff because it runs in my family, I guess, my mother's side, my real mother's side. And uh, he was involved in all that, and he took me a couple of times. But they're pretty insane. I'll tell you, you want to go and see insanity and and uh, do people doing funky chicken and frothing at the mouth and whatever they're doing. <clears throat> It's pretty nasty looking. And, uh, yeah, I only went a couple times, thank God. And both times it was just like, no, this stuff is not for me. All right. Um, but we're going to go into the part here, the secret now manifest. Okay. So prophecy, even as special endowments of preliminary knowledge prepared for further unfoldings and, and maturity, Similarly, the amazing gifts of languages once and for all served as a sign to unbelievers. <clears throat> for it gave evidence of, to man's unrelenting love of, of the darkness instead of the light, even where the glorious message of enlightenment was attended by such a stupendous marvel. <clears throat> the present administration of God's grace in the language of inspiration called for an adjusting of the saints for the upbuilding of the body of Christ unto the end that we should all attain to the unity of the faith and of the realization of the Son of God to a mature man, <clears throat> to the measure of the stature of the complement of Christ. Ephesians 4, 12 and 13. The time has come when the apostle is admonishing and teaching as so as to be presenting every man mature in Christ, in Christ Jesus, Colossians 1.28. This was impossible at the time when 1 Corinthians was penned. Yet later on, Epaphras, struggling for the Colossians in prayer, did so that they might stand mature and fully assured in all the will of God, Colossians 4.12. <clears throat> So we're on that more excellent way with maturity, standing everyone in the body of Christ mature. And this is what's happening in the body. I can tell you this is clear as day. God is bringing about every single member of the body of Christ and standing them up mature in Christ. Um, maybe the process won't be totally completed until... We're in the air or when we're changed from mortal to immortal. This is God doing it uh, through Christ, our brother. Um, this is a completed Christ uh, that is going to be displayed to God's universe. So the head and the body, every ligament, every part, every inch of the body of Christ will be presented as the full and completed Christ to the universe. Awaiting the unveiling of the sons of God, while well, the whole creation is groaning. <clears throat> the whole creation is groaning, and even ourselves, within ourselves, are groaning to be released from this mortality and put on immortality and incorruption. Okay, it was granted to Paul for us to complete the word of God. The secret which has been concealed from the eons and from the generations, yet now was made manifest to his saints, to whom God wills to make known 
What are the glorious riches of the secret among the nations, which is Christ among you, and the expectation of glory which concerns you? Colossians 1, 25-27. Nations and you are both plural. So, en or in, when used with the singular object, should be re rendered among in English. <clears throat> this does not refer to Christ's presence, but presence by his spirit within the individual believer, which was not a secret. Romans 8, 9 and Galatians 2, 20. But to the presence of Christ, of the Christ of God now who formerly, according to flesh, was associated solely with the nation of Israel. We know Christ no longer after the flesh. We know no one after the flesh any longer, including our very selves. We don't know after the flesh in that respect. We know it according to spirit, as believers. Among the very nations themselves, Christ among you. That's us, the members of the body of Christ. Christ among you. We can say this to the world. Because we are who we are in Christ as believers. <clears throat> Christ, who never went among the nations before his ascension, met Paul outside the land on the Damascus Road, not as the lowly Jesus, but as the glorified Son of God, gradually in spirit through the apostles' ministries. He unfolds his secret purpose to be to the nations in spirit all that he had been to Israel in the flesh and far more. This is the secret, Christ among the nations, a glorious expectation, not a subordinate place in the earthly kingdom, but a preeminent place in his celestial domains. As those who recognize that the primitives, primitives for beginning things, as in, are indeed passed by, we rejoice in the, the, the glorious unfoldings which are given to us now, those revelations which complete the word of God and afford us our position of maturity in which we are complete in Christ. That's right, Colossians 2.10. May God grant that our love might be superabounding still more and more in realization and all sensibility for us to be testing what things of what the things of consequence what the things of consequence. Philippians 1 9 and 10. We pray as well for a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the realization of him. The eyes of our heart having been enlightened for us to perceive what is the expectation of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his allotment among the saints. Ephesians 1, 17 and 18. We are waiting for God's son out of the heavens whom he rouses from among the dead. Jesus our rescuer out of the coming indignation. 1 Thessalonians 1.10, we anticipate his presence by faith, in expectation, and through love. For as our apostle has said, and we have discovered, yet now are remaining faith, expectation, and love. These three, yet the greatest of these is love. Be pursuing love. 1 Corinthians 13.13 13, and 1 Corinthians 14.1. Article done by James Coram. So, thank you for listening. Have a beautiful Wednesday, and we'll start something new tomorrow. Grace and peace.